So as I was saying, it's not really what matters. What matters now is what house do you find yourself and which place do you find yourself that you're worshipping God? What is going on there? What, what type of activities are things that are people doing there? Are they the activities you're supposed to find in the house of God? I'm, I'm not surprised because you don't know what you're supposed to find in the house of God. You're not, you don't know. You are confused. You're totally confused on what you're supposed to find in the house of God. What you're supposed to find in the house of God is not this that you're seeing in the house of God now. And who is ready to tell you what you're supposed to find in the house of God? Because all of them are after your money. All of them are after your war you will bring. I was washing a, his, I don't know what to call it. He called himself a pastor. I was watching one of his programs last time. You know what he asked the children, the, the people that come there? He said he was coming out in the morning. And God, I don't know the devil of God that spoke to him like that. And God asked, tell me that today is a marvelous day. That today the blessings will fall like rain. This is the word that designed to deceive you. And immediately he reached in the church. Immediately he came out from the car that somebody was driving him. Of which you know that he don't have care. What is he trying to tell you? He tried to tell you to buy him a car. Don't be stupid. And when he was coming out from the car, a brother just approached him. No brother approached him. He just want to make use of you people. He just want to use the stories to make you look for car for him. Because he's tired of borrowing a car. And a brother approached him and called him pastor. He said brother. He said him pastor. Because he will make this sound so, so realistic to you to believe him. He said this brother called him up to four times at the Spirit of God that I said. <laughs> Everything they turn into the Spirit of God. Because you're blind. Because you fail to see. Then they design to deceive you. He said the brother called him pastor up to three times. He said, what do you want me to do for you? Imagine. Imagine. Then he asked him, do you like your pastor going with a borrowed car? The brother said, no. He said, church, I asked you, do you like your pastor borrowing a car? The whole church said, no. Do you like your pastor to live in a wild room? The whole church said, no. You see, this is what they design. This is what they design. I want you to open your eyes and open your sense and open your brain. This is what they design to lure you into making themselves rich. Because these people that are teaching you all these things, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in heaven either. They only believe on the things of the world. They love this world so much that they will design every sort of things to make you believe them. And by you believing them, you're making yourself an enemy to God. Instead, it's supposed, you, supposed to be a friend of God. How do you think that, how do you see that you will be in a church and you're enemy of the, the God you thought you're worshipping? Because of the evil that these people do. Before it was the evil that people do live after them. But now it's the evil that these people do live after you that are following them. Because they have been given, the God have already given up on them. It's in the Bible. If you watch some of my program, you will, you will understand why I say that. And you will understand, it. You, will, you will read the quotation from there. There's a place that God said, I have overlooked, I have abandoned these people. You see, God has already overlooked them. They don't care anymore. Maybe they know, maybe they don't know. Because all are ignorance of the word of God. It's time you sit up. It's time you ask yourself, what am I doing? Is this really what, the, what God want me to do? Deceiving people? Telling people all sorts of lies. Instead of you to read people, read, read Bible to people, you tell them all sorts of rubbish. Yeah, I know. There is a place you're written in the Bible that will take care of you. I will be your God. I will protect you. I will never let you down. Yeah, that is also in the Bible. But who does this waste belong to? 
is them that are in Christ Jesus. Them that does not walk on the flesh. Those that walk on the spirit only. Not them that shout in the church, the so-called places they call churches, jump up and down, make the neighbors open their windows so that people will hear them praying. Not them. Not them. Not them that stand up and talk to Almighty God and jump up and down and talk to God as if they are talking to an ordinary man. Why do the Bible say, I kneel down, bow down, and worship Him? The Bible said that, is it? Bow down. Bow down and worship Him. Like the song says, Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Knee down and bow down and worship Him. King of Kings. Oh, King of Kings, I say bow down, bow down and worship Him, worship Him. Don't stand up and worship Him, bow down. Let your face, face touch ground and worship Jesus Christ. Because He is the King of Kings, He is the Lord of Lords. He's a God of whole universe. He's the big God. You can't compare him with all these small, small gods. Let me tell you something, my dear people of God. There's a lot of gods. There's a lot of gods. And all these gods seem to be doing something to the people that worship them. But there's one almighty God whom I'm trying to tell you. So I don't know where your pastor gets his own water to take shower. I don't know wherever he gets something that is working all this much more work for you people. Push you, you place it that is God is work of God. Work of God is not this way. God is not give and take. When God heal you, he'll heal you forever. When God courts you, you never go back. When God shoots you, nobody will dischoose you. When God starts something, it lasts forever. The stream of God never lack water. When God starts something, there's no power outside it can stop it. When God gives you life, there's nothing that will kill you. There's no sickness that will ever near you. That is the type of God I'm trying to tell you. But there's some God that if they give you something, they want something in return. If you don't give them that thing in return, it will not take long. They will take whatever they give to you. It's real. And though this picture, 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 pastor, some man may call themselves men of God, I went and inquired all these powers and start doing some abracatab and magic, magic things on you, on you people. Some of them don't know the rules. Some of them don't know the rules, the regulations of all those things they are doing. But I'm telling you without mistaken, that on the last day, you will cry had I know. But who cares about the last day? That's what they will ask me. Why not enjoy now? When, when we die, we face that. But why are you being a Christian if you think that this is the way you want to live your life? Why do you want to be a Christian? It's better not to be a Christian than to be a Christian like this by serving what you don't know. There was a time St. Paul went to the Middle East. He said he saw some people worshipping a lot of gods. Then he saw one altar they wrote unknown God. He asked them, he said, which, which God on that altar? He said, that is an altar of an unknown God. He said that unknown God is what I'm, is the God I'm trying to tell you now. Because th that altar was built so high. 
and some other authors was be slow, slow, short, 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 short. And these people recognize those ones. But that big one, they don't understand what it is. When simple ask, they say, that is the author of unknown God. He said, okay, I will start from that unknown God. Let me tell you who he is. He's big. He's too big to contain. He's too big to fold. He's too big to, to melt inside on a something and wear on your neck. He's too big for that. That is why you don't worship him. He's too big to be suppressed. He's too big to be deceived. He's too big to tell what to do. He's too big to feed, to be fed with blood of chicken and all this beef and all these things. He's too big. That's why you can't. The, his standard is too high. That is why you don't worship him. And that should be the type of God you have to worship. You have to be fear of. You don't fear all these small, small ones. They can't do you anything. Because they don't create you. No, they don't create you. I will keep it holding until we meet again. But I see your brother. I'm not your pastor. And if you can ask yourself, who made you a pastor? And if you can ask your pastor, who made him a pastor? The qualification of pastor is not only in the school. It's not even in the school. Because some Paul says, I do not go to a school of apostles. I do not see Jesus Christ on my eyes. I do not sit down with him and learn from him and he taught me. But today, St. Paul is considered the greatest among the apostles. He said, I only met him on the road of Damascus. And today, look at what is going on. St. Paul says, I'm not even afraid of dying. When King Angripan said, do you know that I have the power to lose you go? He said, my dream is not for you to let me go from here. My purpose is for you to take me to that place, to that people, to the, place, to the leaders, so that I can speak. Maybe some of you will become as I am, not by shame, but not by shame. The angry man said, God forbid, this will not happen. This is St. Paul I'm talking about. This is a type of pastor I want. This is a type of pastor God is looking for. If there will be a pastor. The people that are ready to die for God. Not the, ready, not the people that are ready to die for money. The people that are ready to die for lying to you. The people that are ready to die to deceive you. But people that are ready to die for God. They don't care about what is here. If it is now, they will bribe Paul. You don't go to Rome. You stay here, we give you 30 million dollars. 80 million, 300 million. But it's better you don't go to Rome. They will design lies to him. But suppose I need to go to the Rome to talk to, to talk to them. I need to go there. He said they will behead you. He said, never mind. I was born to die like that. That's the Christianity that keeps this Christianity alive. But if this is the Christianity now, the Christianity wouldn't be here as we call. They leave some important things that they have to talk to you. They have to teach you some things that your soul can benefit from. You have hand, you have leg, you can walk what your body will eat. But let the spirit find out what he will eat. The spirit man in you is hungry, but your flesh is filled with foods and drinks and happiness of your flesh. But your soul is very angry because in no way is going. Because your soul might go to might go to the endless pit of fire while your body rotting on earth here. So your soul is crying because he know that there's no way for him. Some call themselves Pastor Chris, uh, Pastor this la, Pastor Yekoloni la, Pastor David la, Pastor this, Pastor that. Look at look back at your congregation. You tell them what to hear. You tell them what you want them to hear. You know exactly what they want to hear from you. You tell them what you think they want to hear from you. You say your word, you are built up from what you heard from me. From what 
is hard from you. He's building you up to your condemnation. The Bible says, turn back, examine yourself. Are you still on that faith? I will stop here. But I pray that God Almighty will soon bring you out of that place. Amen.